Oh, that was a spoiler. <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Take On Tuesday. I know I look a mess. It's actually 11.42 p.m. right now on Tuesday, and I'm so behind on these videos that I was like, you know what, F it. Like, I just had to come on here and talk to you guys um, because I owe you a video for this week. Please comment below what you thought of the movie. Did you guys watch it? Are you planning on watching it? If you did watch it, what was your favorite part? There is spoilers all throughout this video, and there will be spoilers in in the comments below so if you didn't see the movie go watch it and if you are planning on seeing the movie go watch it before you watch this video and then come back and watch this video when you are done I wanted to talk to you guys today about Black Panther oh my god I loved every minute of it it was amazing and we're gonna get right into it in today's video. First things first, the director, Ryan Coogler, he also directed Creed and Fruitvale Station, um, and he's so young. He's only 31 years old, and basically I guess like him and Michael B. Jordan are like ride or die boys or something because Michael B. Jordan stars in every single one of his movies. The film visually was stunning. Stunning. Name. And it just goes to show the quality of work that can come from people when you give them an equal opportunity. And a lot of the times in America, people that look like me don't get any equal opportunity. It was just so amazing, everything that this movie stood for. It just came out as like the best thing in the entire world. I don't want to give too many spoilers. I don't know. I'll try my best. So I just want to talk about the cast on this movie which was incredible. Um, Chadwick Boseman plays the lead role of T'Challa or Black Panther and I never heard of him to be honest. I even I'm DB him and I don't really know any of the other stuff he's done or been in. Um, I don't really know any of the other stuff he's done or been in, but he did a really good job of playing like the personality of Black Panther, I think. Like he had this very regal, like subtle confidence to him. I think he captured like the quiet spirit of T'Challa and um, I think he did I think he did a good job and I'm excited to see him again in the Marvel universe. He's gonna be coming back in the Avengers movie. Michael V. Jordan. Oh my god, Michael B. Jordan in this movie. It was so difficult for me to be upset with him. Like, he was supposed to be the villain. He was beautiful, just stunning, just gorgeous. And he had very valid points. And they do talk about this when they do the press run and everything, that this is an empathetic villain. Like, I'm I feel what you're saying and you look so good saying it. <laughs> he dances the fine line between like a crusade for justice and a madman. It was really hard for me to be mad at Michael B. Jordan so Michael B. Jordan don't play a villain again. It's not for you. But Lupita Nyong'o, oh, she is just beautiful. She plays T'Challa's love interest. She is strong, independent, but yet devoted to her man and will do whatever it takes to save him and to honor him. Even after she thinks he's he's dead, she still honors him. Oh, that was a spoiler. <laughs> Denai Guerrera, I honestly didn't know who she was, but she, uh, she has been on The Walking Dead since season three and they're now into like season eight. I've not watched The Walking Dead. I've watched like two episodes and I literally fell asleep. I don't like the show, I can't get into it. Let me know in the comments a little bit more about her Walking Dead character. Maybe I'll give it a shot, probably won't, but um, I, I loved everything that she did. Martin Freeman has been in a ton of stuff and it was so cool that he was in this movie, but he's most well known as um, the Hobbit. He plays, plays uh, Bilbo Baggins. He did a really good job of like being like the person that they can call on in, in need, the person that kind of like the sidekick, a little American confidant. It was pretty cool. Um, I really liked his his part that he had to play. Daniel Kalua, another person who I love so much, who turned to the dark side. Damn, it's a spoiler. When Daniel Kalua turned to the dark side, I was just like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. So first, 
You want me to not like Michael B. Jordan? Now you want me to not like Daniel Kaluuya and Michael B. Jordan? And you have them working together against our protagonist? Like this is a moral, a moral dilemma for me. Like I don't know what to feel. And they both look so good as they were wreaking havoc on Wakanda. It was just too much for my heart to bear. Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri, aka Black Panther's sister, aka kind of his sidekick. She's the brains, he's the bronze. She was incredible and this was like a breakout role for her. She hasn't really done too many other noteworthy stuff um, that I know of. Um, she's been in Black Mirror and she's been in um, oh, she's in that new Liam Neeson movie called The Commuter, but I heard that movie wasn't very good anyways. And she's also Guyanese. Hey, they got my country, they got my country. When I found that out, I was like, okay, okay. And she does such a good job in this movie, so I really hope that this, like, catapults her career forward and she just becomes a mega 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 superstar. Winston Duke who plays M'Baku was another one where it was kind of the opposite where you were like okay I want to hate him and he was like very easy to hate in the beginning and then all of a sudden he goes and turns your expectations upside down and ends up being the the foe turned friend who we can call on in our time of need to help us and then he ended up being like the comic relief and he was actually hilarious and he had some really funny like one-liners in there and he will actually be returning in the new Avengers movie and I'm so excited about it I I, I want to see what they do with him I think it's gonna be hilarious they have to make him funny if they don't make him funny like <laughs> I don't know what's the point of bringing him back. And uh, the actor who plays him, Winston Duke, was actually born in Tobago. So another Caribbean big up. There's so many amazing, phenomenal black actors in this movie. It just makes me so happy and so proud. And I just want to see more movies like this. Sterling K. Brown. Okay, I was so excited that he was in this movie because I love his character on This Is Us and he's won an uh, Emmy for his performance on This Is Us and then I found out he was gonna be in this movie. I was like, yes, yes, this is gonna be Oscar worthy. This is gonna be the performance of a lifetime. Tell me why he's in the movie for like a total screen time of 10 minutes. And then he ends up playing like a uh, African or like a Wakandan who went to America and fell in love with an American woman. I thought he was gonna be a regal king of Africa, but they had him in like a black baggy tee and like a gold like, uh, what do you call those like gold chains that are like some like Bruno Mars 24 karat ma magic BS. I don't know. It was just like... <laughs> I was disappointed that they used Sterling K. Brown in that role. Like, they couldn't have found someone more disposable. I guess it was supposed to be somebody that touched your heart because that was the whole- I had so many spoilers. I guess they chose him because he's somebody that touched your heart, so it gave you that empathy feeling for Killmonger. Like, the storyline was just so many layers because his dad was killed by his brother, and it was like, it just reminded me of, like, black on black crime, but then also, like, oppression and like racism in America and like uh, the fact that we are actually kings and queens and we are actually so powerful and so smart and that this potential is hidden from the rest of the world and like they don't know how truly capable we are of like being it was just everything like being a black person watching this movie it just gave me so much pride and I loved it I just loved it Angela Bassett everything Forrest Whitaker, everything. The casting for this movie was just incredible. The second thing I want to talk about is costume design for this movie. Oh my god. Costume design and set design was 
incredible. I mean, they had a $200 million budget. I wouldn't expect any less, but it was just so beautiful and colorful. And like, I watched a couple of interviews where they talked about how each tribe had their like designated color and that theme ran throughout the whole movie. So throughout the whole movie, you would see that one character from that one tribe wearing that color throughout the movie, but like in different shades and different outfits. And it was just so cool to see. And I loved everything about this movie had a positive happy ending it had an incredible incredible message that you can relate to even if you're not black even if you're not a superhero movie fan it was just a good movie with a good story and great actors and i recommend everybody go watch it if you haven't watched it what is wrong with you go out buy yourself a ticket and make this movie like the biggest thing ever because it will show Hollywood that you can have a cast of primarily black actors in a blockbuster film and it can do well. And make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did like it and subscribe because it is important. Like life or death. Okay, see you guys next time.